Hey YouTube, it's Demetri, and today I wanted to run an idea by you guys. When I say you guys, I mean subscribers, students, practitioners, and specifically university programs. Um, so this idea has come to me that the application process is just broken in the quantitative finance space. To be honest, I think it's broken in most academic spaces as well. So let me just run through what typically goes through, right? You go, I want to go into quantitative finance and I need to pick out a few different master's degrees that I need to get into that space. I already have my undergraduate completed. Now, should I get a financial engineering, quantitative finance, computational finance, mathematical finance, those sort of quant master degrees, or should I get a math, applied math, stats, econometrics, or some other type of degree? And so you have this decision to make. And then once you say, okay, I'm going to pick some schools to apply to, you tend to have like dream school. Like when I was an undergrad, my dream school was Columbia. I wanted to go to their financial engineering masters. You know, I liked that Emmanuel Derman taught there. They had a bunch of practitioners. That'd be an amazing fit. And it was not a good fit for me, which luckily I didn't end up going there. It would not have fit what I wanted to do and how I wanted to put all my pieces together. Um, but I didn't know that at the time. And so I had to pick a few of the top programs to apply to. And I picked some backup schools. Now, I ended up getting into some of my backup schools and made a good decision on there. But as a student, you don't know really where you fall. And so what happens is you end up spending, I don't know, $1,000. I think I spent like $800 when I applied um, or maybe $1,000, something around there to apply to some schools. And I think these are schools that are better because I saw somebody said they were better. And I think these other schools would be good backup schools. But you often don't know which school is actually a backup school and would be a slam dunk. So let's think about backup schools as like high probability of getting into a program. And then think about like top dream schools are typically schools that are like ones that you feel are the best fit, are the best programs, have great connections and can get you good job placement and quality. And typically you would assume that your probability of getting into those is going to be less than a backup school, right? So this is how a student thinks about it. I feel like this is just absurd. Like most students have no idea where you actually fit in program selections. Um, I've talked to a bunch of universities over the last, I don't know, since the last like, probably 10 years, but I've been talking a lot to university programs and professionals and practitioners um, and students as well as I've been doing career consulting and I've been doing a lot of academic consulting with university programs as well. I've been doing some marketing plans with universities. I've been really working with a lot of people and talking and presenting, getting involved with this. And there seems to be this problem where one, universities are actually having a hard time getting the students they want, right? So, I mean, you think, okay, I can only apply to say six schools. That's all the schools I have like money for, for applications as a student. And so then you're like, well, these are my top four. And then these are my two backup programs. What you might not know is that that fifth school out of those top ones that didn't make the list that you could apply to maybe your odds of actually getting in there are much higher than the other programs. And maybe it's much closer to your backup schools and you should have applied to different schools, but you don't know. And it's a crapshoot because now you have to apply to every program possible if you want to go through that process. So it's a lot of money. It's a lot of time because you have to take you know, different processes and approaches and filling out paperwork and statement of purposes and interviews and all that that have to be done to get into a program. So it's a lot of wasted money and time on the student's behalf. Now let's look at the universities. The universities are wasting a bunch of time and money doing this as well. So they all want a lot of applications because they want to get um, their acceptance rate as low as possible for the rankings, which I think is ridiculous. Um, but that being said, even when we look at that process there, uh, they're spending a lot of time and money saying we have good students and these are great students, like the top X amount, 80, 75, 80, 90% of students, whatever. But then they want to fill a few extra seats and they want to have a specific cohort size, perhaps. Um, and they're trying to figure out how to wrestle and get a different type of student to fit in with that dynamic. And it's very unique. It's not like they say like, oh, we want students with a GPA greater than X uh, and GRE and GMAT scores greater than whatever. Like they don't have a checklist often in these programs. There's often more thought that goes into this, like program directors and mission staffs are like, oh, I wish I could find like hungrier students that really just want want to be in the industry. And they want that because job placement will be much easier. Um, they'll be more successful in a career. They're really hard workers and get into that. But how do you figure that out? Right. These are hard things to kind of weed out that application process. Um, a lot of programs also focus on diversity, which is an interesting thing in the quant space. Many programs want a diverse student background, but based on education, undergrads, all these different characteristics they look at, because 
they want students to kind of share ideas and work together and get those real hands-on project experience that we use in the industry. So from a program perspective, I don't feel like they're getting the optimal students. I feel like they could get better students that better fit their program and their program's design. Um, for students, I feel like they're also wasting a bunch of money and time and effort trying to get into a program and they don't really understand the whole framework of programs. And what's surprising to a lot of people is one, the quant net rankings, the risk.net rankings, my fancy quant honorable mentions, which is very small. Um, those aren't even anywhere near complete. There are tons and tons and tons of other programs in the US, uh, in Europe, in Asia, for example, um, that have programs, but they don't make it on these lists. And so like in your head, you're like, how do you compare them? right? It's apples and oranges. And then, as I mentioned, a lot of students have been coming to me lately, especially American students saying, Dimitri, these degrees are overly priced. I don't want to go into a quantitative finance program. Is it possible to do this with an applied math or a statistics degree or something like that? And I'm like, yes, it's possible. And I explain the pros and the cons and why it's more challenging to get that job and go through that process. Again, how do you compare these and how do you put yourself in that position? So my idea is coming through at this of working with a lot of different programs of it would be nice if students could essentially pay for a service. Like you would submit an application through Fancy Quant, which is the business I run now, as a service, and you would submit it. And then I would look at all your application, your test scores, all the information you have. Again, nothing needs to be official, right? I'm not accepting anyone. Um, but I'd go through all that process and say, okay, given all the information you have, this is the type of student you are. Then talking to the universities and working with the universities, and this does not work unless enough universities work with me and I can spend the amount of time of data mining programs and alumni data off LinkedIn because I've been working on this quite a bit lately and pulling in all this extra information um, that's often not available or very hard to get, bringing all this information from the program perspective and then being able to marry the two and say, hey, look, you know, program, you know, A, B, and C, whatever. You want these types of students these are the students I have. These students actually would fit what you're looking for. So again, the universities don't see all the students, but I go through behind the scenes and I can say, hey, student, these are the schools that fit you well. Hey, program, these are the students that fit you well. And we can make that connection. And then hopefully you can reduce the amount of schools you have to apply to. Because let's say you can only apply to six schools again, right? Out of those top four, if like two of them are like almost a guaranteed no, and you knew it was like a 1% chance on each, but the next two are like, I don't know, say 25, 30% chance. And there's actually like one or two extra schools right beyond that. It would be like a 60, 70% chance. Like those are big differences in odds and those programs might be wanting you, but you don't know that because you've never connected and you don't want to spend the money to that application process because you can only apply for so much. So I would love to hear what you guys think in the description below because with some inside information from programs, um, with students supplying some information as well as me maybe asking for other information that the programs don't ask for, um, I could help match make and make the process smoother, easier, um, and a better connection. Also, some students already know where they wanna end up in the career, like where they're heading. Some programs already have a focus. Now, the big secret is if you ask the programs, they're all going to tell you their general quantitative finance because every program I've asked tells me the same thing. We're general quant finance. And I'm like, no, you place a lot more quant devs and you are placing a lot more financial engineers in the derivatives market. Um, and you're placing a lot of bankers in the development and validation space. Like, I can kind of break these out already from knowing that. But having programs um, come and pay for some services to help get a better cohort um, better application process and a higher quality candidate benefits the programs greatly. Um, from the student perspective as well, it helps you save money. It helps you get into a best program that you can get in possible and also helps find a good program that you fit well with. I can tell you as someone who did not fit a program very well, not having a good fit makes the experience miserable. Having great fits, which I ended up getting and finding and putting all the pieces together was amazing. It was like this enjoyable process that was very challenging and rigorous, but it was a big change in the atmosphere and the exposure of like networks and people. And it's a much, much better uh, industry outcome if you can match students and schools much better. So I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know. Um, anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you want more videos like this. And as always, until next time.